in the session. Start the recording. And uh, welcome to the session with David, integrating YouTube into the classroom. Um, that uh, please um, uh, check your devices before we start. Just a little bit of uh, our work to discuss. And um, so thanks to the um, companies that support that support this conference and global educational ideas. And uh, these are all companies that support our conference and gave us a chance to exchange ideas, innovations in education with technology. Um, well, uh, for this uh, moment, I would like to invite everybody, and we will give you the tools to um, to show where you are from. Please uh, use these tools uh, on the left side of the screen uh, using um, the star, for example, and place your place your um, star to the to the part of the world you are from, so that we would know who participates in this conference. Uh, wow, so from so many places, wonderful. Um, wonderful, we have so many from Canada. Right, okay. All right, thank you very much, uh, and it's wonderful, and we move on. Um, so the presentation, David already uh, uploaded his presentation, and I think we can start. David, uh, good luck, and I will watch the questions in the chat, and I will let you know what the questions were. Okay, good luck. Hi, good morning everybody, good afternoon, depending on where you are. I want to especially uh, thank everybody on the West Coast for getting up uh, at 8 a.m. or even uh, further if you're in Hawaii. Um, and uh, I want to just first uh, take a moment to thank uh, Ed Surge and Get Ideas. If uh, those of you who are logged on right now uh, don't know Ed Surge, they have the technology track and that's where I applied to do this presentation through. Ed Surge is essentially a newsletter and uh, online blog that covers the ed tech space right now. Um, it is very inspiring and overwhelming to get their newsletters on a regular basis because you see how many amazing ideas are, are out there um, in the ed tech space right now. And uh, they do a great job covering everything. And it makes you feel like you're not doing enough when you see all the great companies on there. So I'm glad to be part of it. Uh, I was happy when we first launched this to be covered through them and now to share uh, sort of what we've put together today for you. Just to give you a, a sense of what I am doing right now, this is online learning. Uh, so this is sort of the whole conference is about how to uh, better the education system globally, um, and we're doing it through an online learning platform. So part of it goes back to the presenter, regardless of where you are. So just to give you a sense of what I'm doing, I'm actually standing up right now, uh, and I'm talking directly to the computer screen. Uh, I'm just trying to get the energy going uh, with that. Um, so certainly, uh, while we're not in a live classroom setting, if you have a question at any point, feel free to chat it in and I will, uh, as long as I see it, I will respond to it and, and go right through that. Um, so, uh, and then just before I get into integrating YouTube in the classroom, I figure I'll just take one minute to tell you a little bit about my background and why I'm actually speaking on this today. Uh, I'm the CEO of Further Ed. Uh, Further Ed is um, one of the leading providers of online education across the country. We started at LawLine.com, which is uh, the leading provider of online continuing education for attorneys. Uh, we've been doing that for about 10 years. All of that is, all of that is um, through on, online video. Um, we built our own platform, and then we got into accounting and entrepreneurship. Um, and then as we started evolving, our mission has never been about providing continuing legal education. It's been about providing uh, learning-based products or services that lead to personal growth. So we took our platform, all the best things of it, and we created a platform that allows teachers all across the, the world 
to use it um, and to integrate it into video uh, to make a better learning experience. And while we were building this platform and thinking of how to do it the best way, uh, we, we actually stumbled into uh, YouTube EDU and all the amazing things that they're doing. And so when we first launched that, it, it was a great combination of creating great tools that you can use to help um, flip your classroom and do online learning uh, in a different format and making the videos useful, and then taking from the 900,000 videos that already exist uh, on YouTube EDU and are added on a regular basis and sort of combining the two. So there's a lot of opportunities, really exciting. So again, thank you for doing that. Uh, so just to give you a, an agenda of we are, what we're going to discuss today, um, if there are no uh, questions or comments, the presentation will probably be closer to 30 minutes, uh, depending on how much more I talk. If there's discussion and we go through it, we can go the full hour. Um, what I'm going to start off with doing is reviewing uh, YouTube EDU, and just making sure everybody understands what that is um, and, and how to take advantage of it. I'm going to discuss some of the challenges with that. Um, and then go right into the solutions and how it can help teachers all across uh, the world use YouTube EDU in their classroom. Um, they're organizing learning, retaining and sharing it. Um, then I'm going to discuss some ideas, uh, how you can use in the classrooms, uh, three different ways that, that, that can be done. And then hopefully there'll be some brainstorming and idea session uh, or I'll throw some out and I'll discuss some predictions. and. Uh, and hopefully we'll all have gained uh, at least one thing. And that's my goal with any presentation that I do. You don't have to get everything that I say or, you know, you can get one thing out of this. Um, it's a success for me. So that's just look to, to see if there's something you can gain from there. All right. So YouTube EDU um, is uh, actually started. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows about the Google 20%. Uh, so the Google 20% is where they let their employees 20% uh, of the time do something that's not in their day-to-day -day job. And that's exactly how YouTube EDU started. It was uh, an idea from different developers um, and started as a sort of a content platform and then just sort of built out from there. So it's great to see that, you know, YouTube realized they're getting all this great content. They realized that there's a need in the education space for uh, more content to be used and organized for the classroom. So they started building that out. Uh, YouTube EDU um, has been growing significantly. <laughs> Every time they put out a new statistic, there's another 50,000 or 100,000 more videos. They had their first conference a few weeks ago, uh, which was um, uh, a lot of the gurus and the educational providers are on there all came together to, to brainstorm how to make it work the right way. Uh, they've been really pushing getting great content on there. Uh, they have, you know, a range from, um, you know, nonprofits like Khan Academy to um, universities from to MIT and everything in between. And, uh, they're really pushing to get as much content on there as possible. And I think it's, it's clear they've established themselves as the players. Of course, there are some uh, areas where uh, lots of schools uh, do not have access to YouTube. Uh, and that's what YouTube EDU is about. It's to give the school administrators the ability to give them access to a separate section of YouTube. And I believe as this keeps growing and platforms grow on top of it, it'll become much more common um, and this access being denied to YouTube will be a thing of the past in the next couple of years. Um, mainly there's four players on YouTube that I see. Uh, the teachers who upload content and teachers can be anything from a teacher at a school to an individual who is teaching a uh, how-to on something that they're an expert at. Uh, the learners who are seeking out the information. Then of course there's the curators who like to find the information uh, and share it with others because they like to put it together. And then lastly uh, there's the developers. Um, and there's developers uh, in the area that we're going to be speaking on today where uh, they're going to be able to work with YouTube to build layers on the platform. Um, so that's the YouTube EDU. Um, to the next slide. And, and uh, what they've done is they've created easy ways. Um, they've done a good job sort of trying to organize and, and create different sections on there. I'm just going to go to the site quickly here. Uh, let me just... Go to my links. It's loading kind of slow. But I just want to show you if you haven't been to the teacher section. So they 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 want teachers to upload um, video from their classes, whether it's straight video or screen shares that they've done. 
Um, and if you go here, you can easily go to classroom videos. Uh, you can pick a subject uh, and then go right to a video that is organized there and start watching the, the video. Um, so it's good to not only go directly to this section, uh, if you haven't been to the EDU section, I'll just show it to you briefly, it's youtube.com backslash EDU. Um, and it's a little bit more uh, video focused, but you can see you can go through different subjects. You can choose um, primary and secondary education. You can actually do a search just in YouTube EDU, and you can find the videos that you need and, and work with it. So there's a lot of content there. Um, Again, you can work with experts from all, you know, what, what are the benefits of working with something like YouTube in general? Um, and these are things that you've heard, you know, going on today in a lot of the conversations with Khan Academy and, and Coursera and all these uh, MOOC type platforms and flipped classrooms. You can, you know, get that expert in one subject that can really explain it well, bring it to the classroom, have the students either watch it at home or watch in the classroom, and then use classroom time, obviously, in, in the flip model to review all that. Uh, and of course, you can find videos that are better than you could have created yourself. Um, you know, we're focused on teaching, not necessarily on video production. So if you find somebody who's taking that topic and done a really great animated explanation of a subject, again, you can use YouTube as the platform to get that topic in uh, a little bit better. Um, and so, yeah, there's a very large set scale, and they've done a pretty decent job of organizing the content so far. But of course, um, there is an enormous challenge. Um, and the challenge ultimately is how can students learn within the YouTube framework. Um, and so, you know, if you think about it for a second, as a student or as someone going to YouTube, uh, YouTube uh, from the first moment, it's just very overwhelming. Uh, there's a lot of content there. There's a lot going on. And you sort of get uh, distracted from the get-go, and you're not really sure where to start or where to go with it. Um, and um, that's on one side. There's a lot of content and not a lot of areas to go. And on the other side is, you know, YouTube is a really <laughs> large organization. And they, they're, they're a video sharing platform, but not a learning-based tool. So there's only so much that they can do with the platform themselves to work in the teaching flip classroom type model. Um, sure, they have the beta programs that they started, and they started uh, a multiple choice beta program where if you upload your own video, you can add multiple choice questions to that and you can use that there. Uh, again, those are in beta and they're testing them out. But they don't have the liberty to, to, to take the risk that uh, developers have where they can take a lot of the things that YouTube has, try something unique and different with the content and the video that they've done, and I'll explain how in a minute, um, and fail over and over again and work with teachers to, to build it up. So there is a challenge to take all this amazing content, all the tools that they have, and make it really usable, not just as a, let me say, as a gimmick, but as a, as a long-term thing for your, your students. Um, and it's a four-pronged thing, just to kind of tell you how I see the challenge. Uh, the first challenge uh, when it comes to, and by the way, when I say YouTube, it's not just YouTube, it's video in general. So I'm using YouTube as, uh, because it's the established platform where there's more information than it's ever been in one place in human history on YouTube, that's what the power of YouTube is. And it would be, um, I think, a bad thing to ignore how much content there is there to be used. So one of the challenges of YouTube in itself is, um, you know, finding what you need. Uh, let's just say you can find what you need. The second challenge for the learner is actually sitting down and watching the video. Believe it or not, just watching a video, of course, is challenging itself depending on how engaging it is um, and how, even if it is engaging, you know, how distracted the student is. So assuming the student can even watch the video, the next challenge um, is, and one of the more important things, is how can you get the student to retain that information that they've just learned from the video? So, and assuming that the student uh, has watched the video, they're able to engage in it and retain the information, how do you get them to share the knowledge that they've just gained from that video and collaborate with others? Because as we all know, uh, the collaboration process is just uh, is a, is a large process in the uh, retention area. And of course, the more you can collaborate, instead of just sending a link to the video, but here's, here's how I built the video up and how, what I've learned from it, uh, you, you can take it to the next level. So th those are the, the challenges that I see with video, but specifically, how to take advantage uh, of YouTube. Um, and of course, at the end of the day, um, uh, 
there is a solution uh, right now. And the solution is uh, luckily uh, based on what YouTube has allowed us to do in general. And they have opened up their code. Uh, so what they've done is they allow developers to build layers on top of uh, the actual API. Now to explain what that means is just to give you examples, things like um, uploading videos, time stamping videos, writing notes that are time stamped to videos, um, splicing videos, adding different videos to a playlist, searching for videos, all the things that you can do on YouTube, you can take that data, put it on your own site and configure it in a whole different way than YouTube has done and create, you know, if you want to create it in a, a learning based classroom or use it in a different way, you can. And that's where, our, uh, that's what we've done. And I think we're just the very beginning and we're just learning and we're innovating as we go. And that's where I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, for teachers and for developers and from the education community to work together to collaborate on this. And towards the end, I'll talk about how I see this as the future uh, model for uh, a lot of the education uh, platform. Uh, and of course, the, you know, the flip classroom is the main thought process of, of how you use video these days. Um, and one of the conversations with Flip Classroom, you have to make sure the video that you're flipping is engaging in, in the first place. Um, and ultimately, all this conversation, I apologize that you can't read the bottom there. It's going to try to make it a link, uh, which didn't work. Uh, but what it says is the ultimate uh, goal here is to turn YouTube in a, into an effective education platform, or to make video an effective education tool. Um, so whether you can organize it, put it together, get it all again, have great technology, have great software, make it work together, have it collaborate, that's all, you know, icing on the cake. Ultimately, does the student learn more information? Does the teacher get more engaged with the student? Um, and can they build a body of knowledge over the long term? Is it not just a one-time thing? Is it something that is going to be a game changer uh, for everyone? And so that's just the goal for everyone to keep in mind. With all, in my mind, in all of these classrooms, it's just how do you uh, change the traditional learning methodology that's been for the past 100 years and involve technology right now uh, from a, you know, the, the, the teacher teaching and everybody, you know, gathering to more of a self-directed learning with teachers more as the curators, sharing knowledge, and then using their own knowledge to help students learn. So that's where I see uh, a lot of opportunity. Um, so what I want to do is I just want to play a quick a minute and a half video uh, that we created on uh, just to give you a sense of what Teach'em is. So uh, just again, Teach'em is a platform that we created that is, very, is free and we, it, we created on the same premise that YouTube created YouTube EDU. Uh, we took 20% of our time and we said what's something that we can do that we think will make a difference. Um, and that's how it got started. Um, so it's a free uh, platform for teachers where they can go in, manipulate YouTube videos, add flashcards, add timestamps. Uh, students can take notes, they can share and collaborate, um, and they can have their own private classrooms. Uh, and we believe, again, this is just one so beginning to the to solutions. And there's a lot of companies and organizations who are starting to get involved in this area. So hopefully the goal of this presentation is to get some good ideas going from this and believe more innovation. So let me go to uh, the video. That one is this. Did you ever learn something that was so amazing that you wanted to share it with everyone? Did you find that when you tried to share it, you learned more about it than you ever thought possible? They say teaching is the best form of learning. Well, now with Teach'em, we've made it easier to be a teacher than at any point in history. So let's explain how. We estimate that there is more knowledge on YouTube than there has ever been in one location. That is both very exciting and very overwhelming at the same time. First, you need to find the video. Second, you need to actually watch it. Third, you need a reliable way to retain and keep track of the information. And fourth, you need a way to easily share that knowledge. We have built a very simple platform that solves all of these challenges. Sounds cool, huh? But how does it work? The first thing you do is create a tool and we'll crown you Dean. Within this school, you can create classes by extracting the golden nuggets from different YouTube videos. 
You can then arrange them in the order of your choice and assign questions to each. Students will have access to the time So, as it occurs to me, with 20 seconds left of the video, uh, you were hearing the sound twice because my mic was on. Uh, so hopefully um, you're able to get something out of that. Um, but yeah, without the sound, you can still get a sense of what we're trying to do. And that's organize uh, and make YouTube uh, something that you can use as a tool on a regular basis. So let, let's get into sort of the methodology that we did and how we did in our platform. Um, for me, uh, in terms of learning, uh, in, in terms of learning the, uh, sorry, I just want to make sure you can hear me. In terms of learning, uh, the first step uh, is simply organizing. Um, and so what I thought of is when it comes to students and teachers, there's too many sites that we have to figure out where to go. You go to YouTube, you don't, you get, sort of get lost from the beginning because there's so much opportunity and different videos to go through there. So what I, what I believe is important is to have one central place when we're talking about video-based learning because there's a lot of great tools out there. There's uh, Schoolology and Mondo and there's these big social platforms and they're great uh, and these, this actually can integrate into that but I wanted to create something that was simple and you know if you go to uh, this one landing page you will have all the videos that you've ever created and I want to show you uh, an example of how one teacher did that just so you can see how you can either upload your own videos that you create or screen shares, or you can uh, just find videos throughout uh, YouTube itself. So here's one teacher who um, actually uploaded all of his screen shares of his classes. Um, and what he did was he just sort of put them on here, and if you go into any of the classes itself, and we, we're going to go into this a little bit uh, more in the other slides, but just to show you, uh, while we're here, um, just to pause that. So he, he created it with, you know, each one with the, he timestamped uh, flashcard to the video so students can not only see. Okay, the define the value of x at m in parallel uh, n. So if we're looking at angle of here. And he, he engaged them through uh, actually flashcards. So we have 2x plus 1 being that angle and 3x well. minus um, 5 top, being that angle. Can take Those would be what kind of angles? Program and the purpose Alternate interior angles, good. So if alternate, let me just go back. Okay. So, uh, so they can organize, they can take flashcards, and they can take notes. And so here is an example of what one teacher did. I think it was a fifth grade class. He put everything together, um, and he was able to use this to um, have the students study at night or throughout the day instead of just before. He would just put the the videos on YouTube and sort of just have them watch on their own. Now he's able to engage them through the flashcards and organizing everything into this one page where they can always come to. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I wanted to make clear when the first feedback we got from teachers was they wanted a place that was private. And so that makes sense because one thing with YouTube, it's, it's not private when you have lots of different videos there. So uh, I believe with teaching or any platform that exists, and I know a lot of them have that, uh, there's an ability to create a private school where only your students can have access to, um, whether it's through a private link or a password or just logging on. Um, that, that gives teachers the ability to use stuff, not only that uh, potentially is copyright protected uh, because of the, uh, when you're teaching, you can use that kind of information, but also things that are directly related to their class. Uh, so I find that's helpful in terms of organizing information. And the next step of organizing information is being able to create categories. One of the things that I found with, with YouTube is there's, you can't really uh, customize the categories to, to what you need. And of course, uh, to me, organized information is, as you can see, this is an example of school. It's actually a uh, business school uh, in Australia. Um, they are able to put their own logo up and their own brand, and people can, can go to that page. I just want to show you what they've done here. That's their link, teachum.com backslash IE. So it's essentially, they haven't created flashcards, but what they've done is they've just used this as a repository of different uh, classes that they have and interviews that they've done. And uh, it's something where, again, it's really easy for the students to come back to. Again, the, the ability of students to watch these videos and now take timestamp notes and collaborate and share those uh, with others is a huge plus in terms of 
either if it's a school or a university. So I just wanted to show you a big part for me of the organization process is being able to create your own custom categories, which you can't do on, on YouTube right now. Uh, so it's taking the videos and organizing it a little bit more that's related to what your class is for. Uh, so once you're, once you're organized and you're ready to uh, get the, take it to the next level, um, you know, it gets to the focus of learning. Uh, and so when you're working with students, uh, what I find is, you know, if it's a YouTube video or a video in general, it's how do you engage students to watch, let's just say, even a 10-minute video. Uh, if you think to yourself, it's very hard to watch a 10-minute video online. It's hard to even listen to a presentation. That's why I'm trying to be as animated and energetic as possible to keep you engaged. Um, so what we've done is twofold. One, we've given the ability for the teachers to create flashcards uh, that have the answers on the back. Uh, and the students to take notes. And we've also, this real secret of what the passion is here, and we'll talk about it for uses in the school, is, is the ability for students to do own self-directed learning, create flashcards, and use notes. And, and again, this is a, just to show you an example of what this class is and how it was used, because I really like giving real life examples. Um, let me just see for how to create flashcards. Um, this might be a different uh, example. Let me just make sure this doesn't apply. Um, so this is uh, an English class, and uh, again, it's a fill in the blanks. And so the answers on the back, as well as you can, if I can go right to that point. Hi, my name is Rebecca, and uh, welcome and to this series of is, videos on uh, business English. We're going to start class, by talking about one of the main so questions that you're asked in a business context, and that is, where do you work? In the video, okay? Interact, there are a number of different ways in which you can answer this question, and, the and they all involve the word you know, work, you know, of course. So, for example, you would start by saying, I work, but after that, you have a number of different prepositions that you use, need to use depending on what you want to say. So we're going to review some of these, and then I hope you'll have a better understanding of what to use and how to answer this basic question. Okay, so let's get started. So the first one is, I work in. I work in can be used for a place. For example, I work in a school. I work in an office. I work in a factory. Right? There are many other examples like that. The learning process so you can engage through uh, questions and flashcards um, and then uh, retention and to me uh, again it's it's by having the students answer questions um, and take notes and then share it with others uh, and I'm gonna get to the next step and then I'm gonna stop for a second just to see if anyone has questions uh, if not I'll, I'll continue going um, and then step four is the sharing uh, to me um, when you watch a great video on YouTube right now, a great thing, a video that you've learned from, uh, and you share it with your network, the, the big downfall is all you're doing is sharing a full link. You're not sharing all of the amazing things that you've gained from it. Now that's very possible to do. Um, and once you turn a video into text that you had part of uh, creating, it becomes part of your body of knowledge that you, you can share. So what I want, I want to do is I just want to show you exactly what uh, we're talking about here. Um, so again, um, you can share by sending um, you can actually send the flashcards with your notes that you're taking to anybody or yourself. Hi, and my name is Rebecca, well. and Again, welcome to this series of videos of on business in being able to put it anywhere and share it with anyone and collaborate. To me, is uh, the next level of taking that flipped classroom and using it to to build your own body of knowledge. Uh, just going back to the presentation, uh, and then it goes back in an email format. Again, these are just ideas of how to take timestamp information. Transform a video into content, transform content to body of knowledge, transform body of knowledge into collaboration, um, and then engaging um, all of those things. And by the way, once it's done, it's organized forever. And the goal is when you retain that information, you go back to it. Um, again, most people don't want to have to watch videos over and over again because 
Uh, videos talk too slow compared to what you need to learn, but they, they'll be engaged in reading the flashcards and using that as um, lifelong retention of that information uh, and sharing it with others. And now, when you share somebody with all the flashcards, not only do they have the video, they have exactly the points that you've gained from it, which I believe is a huge uh, step up from just sharing a link of a video. Uh, lastly, um, one of the, the feedback that we got from teachers, in the first few weeks we had a few thousand um, classes created and teachers using it for their classes, was they want to be able to embed the videos on their own sites. Uh, so we did that as well. So just to show you an example of how we did that, um, if I can get it to work this time. So here, this is one of my favorite uh, documentaries that I've seen recently. Um, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. It's called uh, Future uh, of Learning. It's about 10 minutes and it talks about uh, how learning has been and where we're going. Um, so what I actually did, and this is embedded uh, on our blog, I, I created flashcards and with essentially uh, timestamp to the points in the video so you can get right to that point, uh, as well as you know, flip for the answers. Um, now you can take what was just an embedded video for YouTube and use it as an embedded uh, little class that you can share and put it anywhere that you need, whether it's your own sites that you use for uh, schoolology or at Mondo, you can use the flipped classroom in a more engaging uh, way that students can not only see the video but have the flashcards to go through that. Any questions um, uh, from anybody so far? And if, if not, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> so uh, I see it's in the next question. I don't know if there was a first question. Let me just go up. But to answer uh, the question, what is the business model of the company be around for a long time? Uh, that's a great question because I recently read an article. It's called Dating a Startup, and that was on Ed Surge. Uh, how uh, startups, and it's very scary for the educational um, institutions to partner with startups because uh, they can disappear rather fast or change their business model rather fast. Um, and so uh, my answer to that question is yes, uh, it will company be around a long time. Uh, Teachum is part of a larger company, Further Ed, um, which I mentioned in the beginning, I'll just say again is, Further Ed is uh, one of the leading providers of online education for lawyers, accountants, and entrepreneurs. We built our own platform originally. So we took uh, sort of the Google methodology of 20% of our time to create something uh, that would help more than just those individuals. So we took our platform to make uh, it so teachers uh, for free can use our tools to, to make the flipped classroom better. So we've been around since 1999. Uh, so if that's a good track record, we don't plan on going anywhere soon. Uh, if anything, our goal is to constantly, to use this as a way to innovate and grow. Even in the few months that we've had this, we've made about eight to ten updates based on feedback from teachers. So I help, um, it helps answer your question, who uh, shambles guru. Um, it's hard for me to, let me just go through here for a second. I'm just going to scroll up for one second. Um, Okay, so your first question, Shambles, was uh, what about YouTube playlists? That's a great question because that is exactly uh, on our list. Uh, it was one of the questions, at first, the first week we put the site off, someone said, can we import an entire playlist from YouTube? And I'm not sure if you're asking, can you import it or how does this compare to YouTube playlists? So first, yes, you can import a playlist in here. Second, um, the difference between this and a YouTube playlist is a couple fold. One, a YouTube playlist sort of just takes the videos and, and puts them in the list and you're in the YouTube platform. Here, what you're doing is you're taking, uh, you're creating your own playlist. Each video that you do, uh, you can, if it's a 10 minute video, you can find a two minute segment in the video that you want. So you can intersplice videos together. But most importantly, in the, the tools, the power of uh, this platform is not only to be able to take notes, timestamp for the videos for the students, to e email the notes, to email the flashcards, but to have your own branded page, your own class, the School of View, so you can do it there. So hope shambles that helps answer that first question that I saw. Um, Jesse, I hope you can hear the presentation now. Uh, shambles, yes, it's free. <laughs> uh, 
um, let's see. Um, can a single course have more than one video? Uh, yes, there, never it, uh, there, you there is a question. A limited amount of videos in some classes. Some classes. Uh, so it's funny. We we have called it the school of you. Uh, some of the teachers who use the platform, they call. So you can create as many schools as you want. They just simply say, well, they think of a school as a class, and then think of the videos as a lesson in the class. So some teachers might have five different sections of their math class, and they'll create five different schools, each one with the lessons, because they might be on different paths there. Um, and some people might take a lesson and put 20 videos in that lesson. Um, I just want to go through and make sure I get all the questions. Seagal, David, wants to classroom or can make it private? Uh, yes, you can make any classroom in private. You can uh, engage. Um, you can make it private either by invite only or by password protected. Or like YouTube, you can just make it unlisted so anyone who has the link can see it. But if no one's, if they don't have the link, they can't see it. Um. <laughs> Shambles guru since 1994 YouTube. Yeah, we um, <laughs> we're old timers in the space. Okay, thanks. Now I'm back. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I got them, but uh, now I see I've answered them all. All right. So uh, the next part of the presentation, uh, I want to talk about uses in the classroom, and this is from an article actually uh, by Susan uh, Oxen. Uh, she wrote on teaching pool tools for the 21st century learner. She talks about three different things. It's not just teach them again. Uh, that's the product we we built. It's uh, layering on top of YouTube, it's videos in general. Uh, there's lots of platforms out here. Uh, this is just what we've used. Um, so one, you can use it to create different levels, uh, differentiated classes on specific topics. Uh, so you can have uh, certain topics discussed in class and then go into more detail, obviously, from, on the videos, uh, depending on the student's needs. Um, two, uh, th this is really my passion behind teaching for myself personally. Uh, and this is where I believe the real learning occurs. Uh, you can create student-driven learning activities where the student has to go in and do self-directed learning and create something original with their flashcards. The beauty of this product, and there's things similar to this right now, just this, like Ted, you can flip the videos. Um, they have a tool where you can just go in and just flip it. And then you can create questions and similar to that in a way. It's not based on creating your own classroom and taking your own notes and sharing with students, but certainly you can flip the video. Um, I believe what's great about this is you can take one video that you taught in class um, and have the entire class create their own um, flip of that, their own flashcards with that. Because to me, the part where you learn the most is when you create the flashcards. When you have to think, what's the question, what's the answer, and then put that out for other people and then share it. That's where I'm always uh, loving the learning. Of course, the next level is the flashcards are created, then you can take notes on the flashcards and, and collaborate with others. So I really love uh, that part of this product where you can take some videos that you've created and have the entire class create their own flashcards, take their own smart notes, and then send, and share it with you via email, share it with the class. I believe that's where we'll take it to the next level. And of course, you can use it to create your own instructional videos um, and put them in place of the traditional lectures. Um, and that's sort of like the, the classroom model that Khan Academy has been talking about. That's in the news that it's sort of the big thing right now uh, to put it out there, you know, use the class for instead of just saying the same show, subject you taught year after year after year, use it to review and do exercises where they can watch that at home. Again, it has to be engaging enough, it has to contain the information, that they use it, they can't just watch a, a video. Um, so um, that's some of the uses in the classroom. Feel free to just, you know, I won't respond necessarily, but if you have any ideas or thought process of what your uses in the classroom would be, feel free to share that as well. Um, and then, so th these two slides sort of go together is one, how can we push the envelope even further? And two, what are some of the predictions that we have for YouTube in this, for, for this being the future of education? So. I'll start with this, and this is what's so exciting about what's going on right now. 
when we look to what's going on in terms of information um, and knowledge, uh, it used to be to get uh, access to a video or to, to the actual content itself, that was the part that was um, hard to get. That was the, the prime focus. If you can get the great content, then you're in. Today, that has become the commodity. Content is, as you can see, there's, um, I don't know if you know the statistic, 72 hours of video is uploaded to YouTube every minute. Yes, predominantly most of it is cat videos, <laughs> but of course it's changing. There's 900,000 EDU videos, but there's a lot of content being put up there. And my, every university and the major level is putting it up for free. There's Coursera, there's uh, lots of movies out there. So the content itself is not hard to get. The question is how you use that content how you learn from it, how you use that to further your knowledge is, I think, what will change, be the game changer and how you um, uh, work as a community to build that content. Um, what YouTube has done is sort of building on the model of some of the, the other successes in terms of open source education. And I'll mention two. Um, obviously, they've opened it up so it's free to upload your own content. And then on the flip side, they've opened it up for developers where it's free for them to take the content that's been uploaded and open for the public and to make it more engaging so we can uh, better uh, create a product that people can learn and use the content for their own uh, learning based purposes. Uh, lifelong learning has become uh, in the forefront where before it was just sort of a conversation. Why? Because access to information is so easy. It's how you use the information which is the key. So just two, two examples here. Uh, one is PHP software. PHP software is what, what a lot of our websites are built on. It's open source code. It's free. It's built from a community. Um, there's the, the equivalent in Microsoft where you have to pay for it, but it's been built up from a community over sharing and actually doing. And so as, they, as people build codes, they experiment, they try, and so you become an apprentice right away and start working in um, instead of just listening, you're actually actively involved in, in building the code. And that to me is one of the ways, if you look to how the future of learning is going to be, it's not just going to be teacher learners, it's going to be learners, sharers, teachers, and everybody is combined together and technology will make that happen. If you look to um, Wikipedia, that's another great example. That was one of the first. Now, in Wikipedia, uh, if you, the, the studies have been done, it took about 100 million man hours to create the content that exists on Wikipedia today, which sounds very overwhelming. But when you think about it, really, it's the same amount of time that adults in America spend watching TV commercials uh, on any given weekend. So what that says is when you put a large group together, like we have here in this conference, and you put all the minds together, we all start working, uh, you can accomplish so much. So uh, Wikipedia is on a grand level uh, experimentation of how uh, millions of people uh, can create something that uh, would have taken, you know, <laughs> an infinite amount of time uh, the older models of the technology. So that to me is uh, telling on sort of where we're going in terms of uh, the future of, of learning. I believe that the, you know, of course the cost of education is astronomical, um, and the, so so with the cost and the technology and the tools out here, I believe the future university is not necessarily tomorrow, but later on there will be lots of different types of online universities in quotes where you can uh, that will be very niche on specific topics like PHP, where you can go in there, work with the community, community collaborate with the community, and then. Uh, build your knowledge to that and have some sort of curated way to work with um, uh, professors or elders in the community to test your knowledge and show that you've reached a certain level and then get some sort of certification on that way. Because when you look to uh, education right now, again, why do we have education in the first place? Uh, uh, ultimately, I guess you can say to, to learn and then to get a job, but now it's, it's you want to learn what you need to know right now. Um, and when you get past, you know, when, when you're learning and you're growing, you, you want to know something that's as up to date as possible. 
And by having these niche communities where you can learn and grow, I believe that is one area where you're going to see changes in the future. And I believe YouTube will have a big part of that uh, with their open platform. Um, so that's really, I, I just see there's a lot of opportunity for, uh, with these open platforms to, to make uh, something that we couldn't do before in the traditional system. So that's really where I see things going. Um, that's, I wanted to see if there's any more questions um, about teaching, about predictions, about uh, where we're going, about the open source platform, and then, uh, and then we can uh, leave it on the, on, the, on the note there. So let me just take a look. Feel free to, if you want to ask it or just type it. Uh, so, will teachers be able to show videos? Some schools ban YouTube. Okay, so that was um, a good question. And so, here's two things. One, um, right now, uh, there's. We, by the way, we are building this too because it's been asked already to have videos that are non YouTube based. So YouTube is just a representation of what I believe is the best source of content that ever existed before. So the answer has to be uh, eventually uh, there has to be a shift, a change uh, in the mindset of schools. And, and that's why our YouTube is trying to come to the, the plate with another brand, another something called SchoolTube. So what YouTube has done, they've created YouTube slash EDU where it's all curated content. So teachers can eat, uh, schools and administrators can easily give access to that one part of YouTube and not the rest of it. So I believe there has to be a shift in that area at some point. Um, again, if you don't want to use YouTube itself, that uh, product will be available from us and you can upload your own content. I just think it, it's a loss. Or if the community says, you know what, we don't think YouTube is ever going to be there or not, then fine. Show me another standard that has as much high quality content as YouTube. You're not going to find it. So I believe it's the schools and YouTube that are going to have to work together in, in the coming years to make uh, the open access uh, really do well. And I believe it's going to happen. It's, it's, we're getting very close. Um, are there plans for an iPad app to search through with apps? couldn't find anything I could teach them. Uh, not right now. There's no plan. Um, again, so here's the thing. That the goal is to build something very simple and easy to use and then see what's needed. I still don't really, when we built this, we didn't know if anybody would even care. Um, when we had a thousand teachers sign up the first week, it was a good sign. Uh, but still, there's, there's a lot going on out there, a lot of classes. So we're really engaging the teachers who are using the content and seeing what's the best way to build it. Uh, again, for me, this is uh, a, a passion or a mission of ours. Uh, the other thing I'll say, just on a personal note, I have four-year-old twins. I believe I want to have, build a product that be able to help them as they're going through K through 12 and that make a difference. So that's certainly what drives me. But uh, in terms of the iPad app, there's nothing yet because I don't think we fully built the product to get there. Uh, are you standing beyond YouTube with the Cream on Video? Right. So I think I should answer that. Uh, yes, we are. Uh, but again, I think uh, there are two separate things. I think YouTube is a great content uh, network uh, to be used. So I want to make sure we can get the word out to as many schools as possible, it's not the YouTube it was 10 years ago, or five years ago, or a year or two ago. It's a different world uh, when it comes to YouTube. Um, and then would I mind record, sending you a, I think, would you mind me embedding the, no, I mean, feel free to embed this presentation if possible. And definitely you can embed the YouTube <laughs> uh, videos of it as well. So if it goes on YouTube, I, I don't know if this will be able to, we'll create that as well. Um, what if I select a video for a course and then YouTube removes it from their site? Um, yeah, so that's sort of the, the if it's not YouTube, if the person removes it from the site, that's, I guess, one of the risks that you take. Uh, the, the, if you select a video, you create flashcards, you do know it's, the video is removed, the good news is all the information that you've created attached to that still exists. So the knowledge has been retained if that's been done. There's no way to control that. Of course, that's with any type of third party uh, content you work with. So you can either you can do that as well as upload your own videos, but yeah, so that's certainly part of it. Exactly, there. The course doesn't disappear. The, the notes and everything's in. Um, okay. Any other questions? So I hope everybody who uh, watched this and listened today uh, was able to get that one thing. Um, I know when you're done, there is an evaluation afterwards. Uh, I don't know if I ever see it or not, but feel free to take just a minute to. 
uh, give your feedback, positive and uh, guess, constructive feedback or negative that can work on for the future. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, that's it. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, David. It was it was a very informative, very interesting uh, presentation. And f for those who would like to keep the chat, you can click on uh, the chat um, on the right side, um, uh, on, the, on the top of the page, File, and then Save. And you can save chat for those links and resources and questions and answers discussion. You can save it. and. Uh, it was a great presentation. You, when you click out of this classroom, you will get the feedback form. Please uh, submit your feedback. And thank you very much, David, again. And uh, we need to leave the room so that the recording would start uh, the process. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you, Chris. Uh, Shambles. <laughs> um, uh, Chris has a lot of interesting resources on his website. Just uh, I recommend everybody to join it. And of course, on Scoop It, um, I enjoy uh, following um, Chris's resources. It's really uh, always inspiring and ahead of the game. <laughs> So uh, please, uh, you leave the session and we can uh, stop it and mm, record it. Thank you very much.